Alrighty, the last scene, Act Five, Scene Nine. Basically, uh, for every every part of the second half of this is important and is an echo of an earlier part of the play, and is a relates to being uh, Macduff being a foil of Macbeth, and even calls back to Duncan and calls back to when uh, Macbeth was named king and so on. But the only another juicy part is when Seward says, uh, basically, Seward learns that his son has died. Uh, and they, he says, how does he die? How did he die? And they said he died fighting Macbeth and he died on the battlefield. And Seward basically doesn't blink at all. He doesn't feel it like a man. He doesn't appear to feel it at all. He basically says, oh, that's good. Good on him. Uh, I wish that uh, I had as many sons as I have hairs on my head, which is a play on the word air, hair. You know, you get it. Uh, but he's basically saying that that's, that's the way you want male children to die. And it also suggests that just children, as with wives throughout the play, chick being called chickens and so forth, really aren't valued at all. Like they're like you know, maybe losing your favorite possession rather than something, you know, really important. Uh, and then, so on the last page, all of this is important. So Macduff says, Hail King, for, thou, for so thou art. So obviously that's a callback to when Macbeth is uh, crowned as king. Uh, all hail Macbeth and such. Uh, and, you know, all hail Macbeth, King Thereafter, and all those references back there. But importantly, uh, I want you to think about how often Macbeth is actually referred to as King Macbeth, or um, I, I had a quick scan back through, I can't really, doesn't stick out as a thing that actually happens. Uh, but all, importantly, Malcolm says, We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. So he's basically saying, we, this speech won't go on for long. You're king here, so let's get that sorted. Uh, as calling home all our exo exiled friends abroad, so all the people that Macbeth chased off into the wilderness are now being welcomed back, because that's what a king does, welcomes people into his sort of clutches, I guess, into his kingdom, into whatever. Uh, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as it is thought, by self and violence hands took off her life. So this is where we get confirmed that his wife, everyone believes that his wife killed killed herself. Lady Macbeth committed suicide, completed suicide rather, but it's pretty much close to confirmed here. Malcolm says, uh, what's more to do which would be planted newly with the time? So that's the throwback to Duncan. All of the things that Duncan talks about as a good king are about like, I will grow my people up, they will grow with me, and together we will grow strong. So like the metaphor of a gardener, a good king is a gardener, and in this instance, a bad king is a butcher. So the critical question for you is uh, comparing the three leaders, King Duncan, King Macduff, and King Macbeth. I don't know why my brain struggled with that for so long. Uh, find a quote to illustrate the type of leadership of each of them and then make a comment on what you think makes a good leader in, in the modern world and in your experience of leadership. So whatever form that is. Uh, and then lastly, so thank to all at once and to each one whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone. So that is the end of the play and that's the whole thing done. Nice work and uh, thanks for hanging with me.